five, I would make different decisions from Anwar. I know that I'm extremely fortunate never to have to find out. Um, I also saw the ways, and I think you all saw it and felt it, and that's probably why the film's so painful in some ways, if it is painful to you. you we, saw, we witness how his humanity, his vanity, his confusion, his need to justify to himself what he's done because he's human and knows what he did was wrong, because being human, he's actually a moral being. We witness how his humanity is involved actually in the execution of evil in different moments in the film, that he, he to maintain a lie, he go, takes the project further, he takes the rhetoric further, and we can imagine from that that somehow the time of the killings he might have taken things further because he was trying to maintain the lie that everything was justified. You know, if Anwar, once a bunch of, once you have a society ruled over by killers who have won, they then have to write a victor's history to justify what they've done. Adi says it very clearly in the film, he says killing's the worst thing you can do, but if you're paid well enough for it, if you can get away with it, go ahead and do it. But then you must cling to an excuse for the rest of your life so that you can live with yourself. That is to say, Adi is saying, you must lie to yourself. And, but to, and that, those lies are called propaganda or victor's history, but to maintain those lies, inevitably, which we, which we do not because we're evil, but because we're human and are moral and don't want to, fa to face the tormenting effects of guilt, to maintain those lies inevitably leads to this downward spiral into further evil, corruption, and ultimately a moral vacuum. Anwar, if he's, uh, uh, now they have to blame the victims because the propaganda justifying the killing says it was their fault. They have to kill again, um, if asked. That's perhaps the most disturbing thing. If asked by the army to kill another group of people for the same reason as Anwar killed the first group, Anwar has to do it, or at least had to for many years. Because if he refuses the second time, it's equivalent to admitting it was wrong the first time. So there's this way in which we see his humanity involved in the practice of evil. If we separate the human being, there, I think if we are not going to make the leap from saying this man has done something monstrous to this man is a monster, and actually look at how we human beings do these things and are complicit with these things, that entails separating somehow the human being from the action. And maybe that's also the beginning of forgiveness, but it doesn't mean that there's no place for justice. It, in fact, I think on the contrary, means that we must be all the more rigorous in condemning the action, so, and also trying to understand it. So I guess, I guess there was never a moment, there was never a second when, to finally answer your question, there was never a second when I forgot my condemnation of what Anwar did. And yet, I also could appreciate something which is true, which is that he is a nice grandfather with nice grandchildren, and he is a nice person, and those things are not incompatible. 